blessed one, noble one, the rightly self-awakened one. Homage to the blessed one, noble one, the rightly self-awakened one. Homage to the blessed one, noble one, the rightly self-awakened one. Welcome to the monks and novices and blessings to the laity. Friday, we come to study Dhamma on the topic of Mudita. Mudita means to rejoice, to be pleased and joyous at the happiness and abundance of others. The heart of the person that has Mudita will take others' happiness as their mental object. They have appreciation of other people's good things with a mind that has the characteristic of not being jealous and envious. They're able to get rid of jealousy and envy. Seeing someone else's good things is not a reason for that feeling of jealousy to arise. The mind of a person with mudita takes others' happiness as an object for their mind. They appreciate other people's good things. They have a mind without jealousy and envy. They see the drawbacks of jealousy and envy. They see the benefits of the mind that rejoices, that has joy and pleasure at the happiness of others. When Dhamma practitioners learn about the mind, they will notice that the bad mind is the mind that has the emotion of jealousy and envy. This emotion impairs the happiness of our minds. It will cause a lot of damage to our minds, to make it depressed. But the people who try to practice training their mind, they see the benefit of the mind that has gentleness. The mind that sees the happiness of others is like our own happiness. When others have good things, they have wealth, have status, have praise, then we rejoice with them too. Our mind is full of joy and happy in body and mind. Developing mudita is the spreading of a feeling of joy and pleasure in the happiness and abundance of others to all directions, to the north, south, east, west, etc. And this developing of mudita can be divided into two aspects. The first is true mudita, that is, one rejoices and has gladness at the living beings that have happiness, or that will receive happiness in the future. But the mind does not have any attachment or have a desire to boast to others. There is just great joy and gladness, that is a great goodness arising in the mind, and we can observe this well within ourselves. But the second aspect is also mudita, but it's a fake mudita. That is, even though it may be true that there is joy, but there is attachment as well, or there is a desire to get something good, to gain recognition, and to want to be known for it. This hides the mind that is unskillful. The mind is under the power of greed. This fake mudita usually occurs when one sees one's parents, relatives and friends go well and are happy. One attaches to this or that person due to them having a relationship with oneself, with us. And when one gets recognition and personal benefit, then this is fake mudita. So we come to learn how to develop this mind of mudita. When it is true mudita, then we spread it to all living beings that have happiness and will have happiness in the future. There are three types of people that we should first refrain from developing mudita to. The first is the person we love. Next is the neutral person and then the hostile person. This is because all these three types of people are not in a position that can train our minds to have mudita. The ones we love 
are people who we love naturally, and they may lack the special characteristics such as being a person who is always cheerful, an intelligent person who greets others first, a good speaker, one having good manners and gentleness, one who is fun and merry. So those who lack such characteristics, even if they're counted in the group that we love and respect, it is still not enough to initially make us have the sublime abiding of mudita arise within the Dhamma practitioner. And more so, if it is a neutral person or someone who is hostile, then we are unable to have mudita arise at all. Also, for the opposite sex and those that have died already, they won't be able to be used as our mental object to train the mind to have mudita. The reason is similar to that of cultivating metta and karuna. But the one who initially can be used to make the quality of mudita come up in the mind is the very dear friend or a close companion. They are friends that it's easy for us to say anything to them. They have a character of being fun and joyful. When we meet them, they smile first. We're able to initially spread mudita to those dear friends who have qualifications like this. Or we can easily develop mudita if we hear the news that a loved one receives happiness and abundance, as well as various objects of enjoyment. But if a dear friend of the practitioner had happiness and abundance in the past, but now they've become miserable and in suffering, then we should remember the happiness that they had received in the past and hold on to that happiness that they received as a mental object to develop in our meditation of mudita. We contemplate that these people in the past were ones who had great wealth, lots of friends, who were always cheerful, and so on like this. Then it will be possible to develop a mind of mudita at that time. Or we can take the future as an object of the mind, that in the future they will get that wealth and good things back as before. They will surely gain and use that wealth and become a very rich person, and they will surely have happiness. So we develop mudita to that person, and when one can make mudita arise for a very dear friend or a close companion, then the mind is easily calm and it has proficiency, skill, softness, deserving of work, and then we can develop mudita to other people. If one has developed it skillfully, then we can progress to the people we love and to neutral people, because by then our meditation will be able to make our minds equally calm. This is cultivating the meditation of mudita, and it is quite difficult to develop. This is because usually people will have a mind of jealousy and envy. But however it is, if we develop mudita as an important meditation and we're able to do it, then this is one of the four sublime abidings of metta, karuna, mudita, upeka. And we will see the benefit of developing a mind of mudita. Because developing mudita makes our mind joyful and gladdened. It's free of jealousy and our mind will be very happy. So we must see the dangers of jealousy and envy. See that it has a lot of drawbacks. Let us contemplate the drawbacks of jealousy. That it is absent of mudita. It lacks the rejoicing and gladness with other people, and the mind is easily lowered. There are people born in this life, ones with little merit, with little spiritual development, but they still do not realize that they should do more goodness. When they see others gain good things, have wealth, have others respect them, many people looking up to them, they are jealous and malicious to them. If they are not able to suppress the jealousy, then this will lead to bad bodily karma. This is bullying and preventing that person from getting good things. These kinds of people will suffer.
from results of gamma, from jealousy. And this may happen in the current existence or the next life. It will result in them being a person who has no prestige, no power, never being the first at anything, and whatever they do, they will not be successful. The Buddha once said, Here, student, some woman or man is envious. He envies, begrudges, and harbours envy about others' gains, honour, veneration, respect, salutations, and offerings. After death, he reappears in a state of deprivation, born in the hell, hungry ghost, asura, or animal realms. And if they come to a human state, they will only have difficulties and troubles. The person who is envious of others and jealous will have the results of bad karma, that they will be a person who has no power, no spiritual development. Under the power of these qualities, it is very difficult to accomplish whatever they aim for. Even if they try hard and have effort, it's coming from their envy and jealousy of others because that envy is within their heart. They do not want others to be better than them. They become obstacles to others. Then they themselves don't get those things. They don't want others to have wealth and fortune. Then they themselves don't get wealth and fortune. They don't want others to have happiness. Then they themselves don't get happiness. They don't want others to eat full. Then they themselves don't eat full. They don't want others to sleep well, then they themselves don't sleep well. There is a story of one of the monks in the era of the Buddha Kasapa. There was one monk who had ordained in a certain monastery. One day there was an Arahant monk who had travelled a long distance from another place, and the monk didn't know that the monk coming was an Arahant and the monk had fear that the lay people would gain faith in that monk, so he was envious and bullied that Arahant monk, making him miss one meal. As a result of this gamma, he went to hell for a long time. When he came to be born as a human, he had never eaten full, not even once. This was from having destroyed the gain of the Arahant before. However, in his last life, even though he was a person with little gain, but he was able to attain to becoming an arahant due to having built barami and great goodness for many lifetimes already. This is one example of kama that follows one, even though he was an arahant. Here, we are in the process of training the mind, so it's natural that the delusion will damage our minds to have jealousy and envy, to not want others to get good things or to go well. Sometimes we think of destroying others' fortune, damaging their wealth, damaging their rank, damaging their praise, damaging the respect and worship of others to them. But we try to train our mind. When our mind is like this, and we have seen the dangers in this, then we try to develop the mind of mudita, the mind that rejoices with the success of other people, that they have wealth, have praise, have power, have spiritual development, and we rejoice in that person's goodness. It is a skillful method to improve the calmness in our mind. May you try to learn this and practice it. Doing this, we will progress and our minds will easily be calmed. Therefore, We have to be very careful with our minds and to try to train our minds to have mudita. If we can train our minds like this, then our minds will have calm, as mudita is a meditation object. Developing mudita in our meditation will support our mind. So no matter which meditation object we use, mudita will be a meditation that will look after our mind well. And our sila will be complete. Our samadhi concentration 
will be able to be firmly established. Wisdom will be able to arise and will be able to see the truth of Dhamma. Let us practice and develop a mind of mudita in our meditation. Have proficiency and skill in it. And this will give the result that we will be one who is cheerful and joyous. And we can see that there are people who are born into this life who are ones abundant in wealth, rank, position, duty, work. They are cheerful and joyous and everyone wants to get close to them. Everyone wants to know them. Anyone who goes to talk to them have happiness because they are people who don't have jealousy and envy to others. They are ones with a beautiful mind that is considerate of others. So I ask all of you to be complete with a mind of mudita. May you all grow in blessings. Thank you.